Hey. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Good. How about you? How honest are we going to get? Well, okay. It's terrible. Yeah. Basically. Well, actually, I'm having a nice day. It's beautiful out. I walked, I walked outside. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> your silence tells me that you didn't have a good day. No, it's been a shit week and a like shit day. I did go for a walk though. I got outside. I did like six and a half miles. Wow. So I was like, you know what? We're going to drag ourselves out. That's right. And still get it done. Yeah, I got my resistance bands in the mail today, so I tried out that, and that ended in a slight injury, as expected, which I caught on video, um, just casual. Wow, you're basically Brittany when she broke her foot. Basically, I just had that moment. I also set uh, me doing the full workout to Roman Holiday, so... Uh (laughs) (laughs) I I felt she would be proud if I just put it at three speed and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> did a 15 second version of it but um yeah we're, we're figuring those out they're just giant rubber bands it's so weird yeah i don't really get it but i guess it's interesting yeah i gotta watch a video or something i gotta figure this out but um you got your walk in and yeah i just feel like i'm at a point where this is gonna be so long and i'm so over it And even going outside for walks is like fine, but it's just another reminder of like everything that's going on. So I'm like, there's no escape. Well, can you go and visit Linny Bunny, Queen Linny? No. um, In Jersey? No, because I'm not, I don't want to travel anywhere and see anyone because one, it's not really recommended. Yeah. And if I were to like leave the city and visit my parents or visit someone else's house and then get them sick... I couldn't live with that. I know. So I don't, I mean, cause we just don't know. Even if I was socially distant as I traveled, yeah. you, it's like, you still don't know. I know. It's true. It's true. It will, things will ease up eventually, but I get it totally. And I will say, I also, you know how we were talking about how music streams were down. Mm-hmm. I understand why now, because I was having this moment today on my walk where I was listening to songs that were reminding me of concerts and things. And I was like, I can't, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Oh yeah. I fully can't listen. Dua is the last uptempo album and maybe Rena that I was like allowed to enjoy. And now I just can't enjoy dance songs right now right? for the most part. Just like really, just in a really moody moment right now. So it's like everything just sends me into like, a, oh, wow, that concert was so fun. Can't wait to never go to a concert ever again. Wow. Well, it'll happen again. It's just going to be like two you years know, from now. Two years. But <laughs> but now it's like, it oh, will happen. it will happen again. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> but I the point was I was having a moment where I was like, oh, now I understand why music might be down because yeah. I don't want to listen to this. <laughs> Completely. And I mean, a big part of it is commutes obviously are done for most people. And uh, no one's really strutting the sidewalks that much. Nope. I guess maybe as the weather gets better. But that's it makes sense. And also the restaurants, bars, and gyms were streaming things and keeping that you know those numbers up. And that's just non-existent now. So... It's not really a surprise. Yeah, I've just been listening to EDM. <laughs> but I want emotional music to come out. Oh, I think it will come out. I uh, need like a Kelly Clarkson, My December moment. Well, we need her to stop. We need her to stop living for love and start <laughs> living for her sadness. Because right? right now she's on a loving journey and she needs to get off that journey. You know her song, Irvine? Wh- which one? Irvine. Oh, yes. Uh, that's the mood that Irvine. I'm like looking for. Oh, is, yes. it, is it Irvine? Irvine. And oh. then also um, Chivas. <laughs> we literally just lying on the, the floor at a concert venue. Right. Like locked quarantined in a closet. Yes. That's what I need. That's the vibe of music that I need right now. Cause that's my mood. Deep, my December moments. Yes. My quarantine. Oh my God. That's a concept. That is a concept. Like everyone was talking about like, oh, I don't want quarantine music. And I hope that my reality shows aren't filming right now. And I'm like, no, I want like a full depressive album right now, actually. Like a stripped My December. Mm. 
something moment. As long as it's good, I think people would like. I think that's the problem is that I don't know that artists have access. I mean, collaboration wise, I guess now it doesn't really matter, but you know, we have to get them to a recording studio and everything, but we'll see. I think that some good music will come out of quarantine. And some already is. That is true. Which we will talk about later. (laughs) But first, some other random quarantine moments that have happened this week, because, you know. Yeah. And I just forget about all the misery. um, I think we didn't say hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends. Oh, right, right. Okay, let's do it. (laughs) Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another at home. <laughs> well, we were always at home before. <laughs> oh, we were. <laughs> to another episode of Legends at Home. <laughs> oh my God, your like audio <laughs> cut out in the beginning. It was like let ends. <laughs> uh, I'm so resentful of this Connecticut Wi-Fi. Oh, it's fine. Um, yes, oh, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. Your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about being trapped at home, depression, misery, new music, fashion. And Britney Spears. And Britney Spears. (laughs) Kind of sums it up. Yeah. Our moment of joy in the week. Mm Mm-hmm. Because the rest of it is not. Um, Well, why don't we talk about um, some things that have been happening in the week? You know, there's been some some updates uh, specifically on the charts. I'd say that was the big phenomenon of the week. Yeah. What is going on? Um, what the it's fuck pure is madness. going on in here on this day? Um, if you, at this point, nobody really knows what day, time or year it is. So as a result, the iTunes slash albums charts are reflecting that because if you look at any given moment right now, a Madonna, a Mariah, a Janet album will be floating to the top of the charts. Um, so what had happened was iTunes did this like pop albums, four ninety nine discount on a lot of legendary albums from Queens of pop among others. And obviously fans are bored at home. So they've banded together for justice for a variety of albums. E equals MC squared bedtime stories control for Janet charm bracelet for Mariah just, just arrived. American life had a moment. It's purely insanity. And although I don't know if it's going to end up being like charting, charting, because iTunes is kind of extinct, I think it's still going to have a little bump. Brittany Jean was number three on the vinyl charts. Brittany Jean pulling in strong on the vinyl charts. The best ever vinyl debut for Brittany is, of course, um, the album that she doesn't sing. Right. But I have to say that is a beautiful vinyl. It is. Can't clock the the artwork slash design of that. No, it does. LP. You know, it has a good cover. It does. I'm, I'm not mad at it. And you have some handwritten moments inside. Yeah, personal. well, I haven't opened mine, but oh, she's well, staying wrapped. In 2050, <laughs> yeah. when you open it. Yeah, underwater. <laughs> underwater. But yeah, I guess that's kind of been the the great absurdity of this week is while everything is aflame, um, our queens of pop are charting <laughs> from it's... 20 years ago. <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> Lindsay Lohan has a new single. Albums from 20 years ago are charting. <laughs> Did you see the thing about Lindsay the murder Lohan's hornets? Also, she's also following you at this point. Oh yeah, little side note. This is like probably the happiest moment of my week. It was like Lindsay sure. Lohan has followed you back. And I was like, oh my gosh, one step closer to being on Legends Only Pod. For sure. Oh, I think it's a possibility. Definitely. I'll be like, let's talk about Xanax. Oh, I think this is a great development. I think now that she's watching your feed, um, she will be inspired. And we will get her on. We'll ask her about her dog who passed at the age of 27 and also about her collaboration with Brittany that apparently exists. And the new album that we need, apparently. Uh Uh-huh. And then you can tell her to collab with Kygo and do some EDM. Oh my god, right? Go electronic. (laughs) Oh my god, we should get on. So you guys love clubbing? Are you dancers? (laughs) I was just gonna say, that would be... So, Lindsay, um... (laughs) Are you a dancer? Lohan Beach Club. 
we already know that Can we she do is dead. justice for a Lohan holiday this Christmas season. Oh, that's a great idea. We'll do you know, a deep dive. All I want for Christmas is you at number one last year. I think coming up this holiday season should be Lohan holiday. It only makes sense as the second most listened to holiday album of our time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Aliana Lohan, Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> Lohan holiday. Good. We'll put a pin on that. And then when we regroup in December. <laughs> our we'll December. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I guess at this point, we should probably just want to turn it to our audience right now and give a shout out to everyone who is supporting us on Patreon. Yes. Before we jump into this week, sorry not to be so negative at the beginning. I was just, you know, it's been, it's been a week. I'll just say that. Um, Mm -hmm. Yes. We would like to give a shout out to our Patreon legends only fans. Thank you all for your support on patreon.com slash legends only you guys are keeping the Britney podcast hosting up. You're keeping this hosting up. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. And we have some fun things planned for you when our schedules align and we can get some extra stuff and extra recordings out, some deep dives. We will. So make sure to check point, out. I think I probably am going to invest in something to record from a distance with you. I don't know if this is the best option. This Maybe this is a little too high tech for this conversation, but I assume I should at this point invest in something since I do not foresee this being in person for a moment. Yeah. I wonder what we could get you. Yeah, we can, we'll take it offline and look it up, but I do think I have to, at this point, start a little home studio of my own for you. I know that's so weird to think about that. It's going to be forever. Yeah. But I do think if I just get a nice, a podcast mic, maybe this would be better quality. Yeah. It doesn't sound bad though. Okay. Okay. Well, Sounds better than a lot of these uh, at-home oh, celebrity performances. Oh. Well, call it out. I'm just saying. It's true. That's the other thing, too, is like, I'm so sick of these like at-home things. Yeah, go outside. Oh, wait. No. You can't. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's just like, it, some of it just sounds so bad, and it's so blurry, and I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, it's hard for me. Like, I know you're doing everything you can, but like, can you upgrade your iPhone resolution somehow because it is choppy yeah this is why i think youtubers are going to come out on top of this because they have already been quarant like basically quarantined and introverted filming and recording their own stuff at home forever so absolutely whoever won instant influencers ten thousand dollar home studio package is going to be the only one who come out <laughs> to come out on top of this literally which we will be discussing that later on oh, by should- the way But right? Um, I mean, it's like, the only thing I will say, though, this week that I was like, okay, this is next level. And this is something mm -hmm. different. Did you see the Atlanta reunion trailer? Oh, I did. And I had I meant to comment on it to you. I thought that was very impressively uh, high def for what it is. I'm obsessed with the fact that they all got up in ball gowns to sit down in their living rooms. Yeah, with their little headphone pieces in. Pretty iconic. I think the, and also the fact that they're just in their living room means they can just really scream and not feel anything. Right. So it seems like they're letting each other have it as Andy's sitting there sipping tea. I was kind of screaming because it's it's so funny because it almost is like yeah. a parody of itself. Oh, completely. I think, and I saw a lot of people, uh, there was a lot of positive reactions to it. I think they're definitely making the best of this situation. It's going to be really entertaining, I feel like. Yeah. So I have to, I can't say I've kept up with most of the franchises for years, but I'll have to tune in for that. Yeah. I don't don't think I missed much. (laughs) No, I mean, I haven't caught up either, but it's basically just the concept of it, of all these people in ball gowns sitting at home screaming yeah. into their iPhones <laughs> at each other. I mean, it's it's literally, you can't see us, but we're doing that too. So that's kind of that's funny true. how that works out. As I stare out the window. <laughs> right. You already have the wig and the dresses, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll actually be kind of interesting to see, but... um, We'll see. I'm guessing that at, the, at some point, they're just going to start importing fancier and fancier equipment into their homes until there's home movie making actually yeah or everything's just on green screen yeah charlie xcx is doing that so just liven it up a little bit time for a hologram queen of pop to rise up this is 
no better time than <laughs> DJ Sona. It's your time. <laughs> Someone will get that out there. Uh, so I have a question about something that is still airing, and I do believe this could be part of our, our uh, ongoing segment about um, foolishness. How is Jeopardy still going? I, is it? I mean, unless they just taped it so well in advance, because this this week, if you haven't noticed, has been a viral jackpot. Oh. Jackbox? Jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a jackbox. Yeah. It's been... Uh, Were you trying just... to say, like, a jackass in a... Jackasses of a jackpot of jackasses. Yes. <laughs> Although I don't want to call them that because it's not that it's not that serious that it yeah. But I would say Back they the full girl. acted a full girl. <laughs> Back the full. Exactly. There were two incidents over the week. Um the first being a slip of the tongue that was just iconic. One of the women was asked, or the contestant was asked um about a warrior leader that Zulu's celebrate every September and she buzzed in really fast and said, who is Shaka Khan? Sarah. Who is Shaka Khan? Nope. She, she meant Shaka Zulu. Uh, <laughs> like that RuPaul. <laughs> Shaka Khan. Shaka, yeah, she basically watched the episode and was like, oh, fuck. She immediately realized what she did. So that was sort of like embarrassing. But then more <laughs> unforgivably, this week, uh, just a few days later, actually, um, a contestant buzzed in for a music category and was asked this icon just got the icon award and hadn't performed for over a decade and then they played a clip of her performing and his name is alwyn very confidently said who is ariana grande i now i understand some people felt that the performance looked like her because of the pony it did and the high boots yes it's just the combination of her performing. I think she was performing control in the clip and the cl- the clue being she hasn't performed on a stage in a decade and an icon award was like, okay, you didn't you didn't take any of that into consideration. You just saw who you thought was Ariana Grande, which is so upsetting. Well, the ponytail. Yes, I suppose. But anyway, as I said in my viral tweet that was posted on today and ET and E online. Oh, uh, she's a tweeter. <laughs> she, she tweets a lot. She is social um, media influencer. <laughs> our nation's nerds are in desperate need of doing some music icon homework between Shaka and this moment. It's just, what was his name? <laughs> Alwyn. Clearly Alwyn was not listening to legends only pod. He clearly was not listening to Control, which just charted. (laughs) You know what? It's fine. It wasn't in his study booklet, which I assume is what Jeopardy contestants do. They get a booklet. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Smart people stuff. Can't relate. Index Uh, cards. Anyway, I think it's time to check in with someone who once again (laughs) has proven to be um, a shining light in the quarantine. Yes, everyone. It is time for the segment that is just so necessary in these fan times. Demanded. Fan demanded, globally demanded at this point. 24 7 quarantine knee watch. So, our world is going through such hard times right now. Coronavirus. And we're all staying in. Coronavirus. And, coronavirus. and we're, we're all staying, staying in. in. I burnt my gym down. So, coronavirus. And, and we're, we're all staying, staying in. in. One thing led to another, and I burned it down. Stream and or purchase Glory so that we can get it on the Billboard Hot 200. It really rolls off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> our world is going through so much right now. Okay. Queen of pop, um, legend icon moment. Britney made headlines this week for doing something she did six months ago, apparently. We'll have to roll the clip of what she said, but you've probably already heard it if you're listening to this podcast because you will already keep up with her. Everyone has seen this clip, I feel like. This went incredibly viral. Hi guys, I'm in my gym right now. I haven't been in here for like six months because I burnt my gym down, unfortunately. Um, I had two candles and yeah, one thing led to another and I burned it down. So I'm in here and I only have two pieces of equipment left. Brittany casually telling us that she has burned down her home gym because of candles and, you know, one thing leading to another. This made me laugh so hard. I- <laughs> Because the way that she said it was so 
nonchalant. And that is truly the essence of Brittany, is just to be like, yeah, so I burned down my home. So, (laughs) I'm like, wait a minute. First of all, how did no one hear about this? Yeah, go call the police. Where was the scanner with, like, the fire department? Mm -hmm. Who put the fire out? Did she put the fire out herself? Is it fixed? I'm sure Jaden did. I have to assume. (laughs) I have so many questions. What there brand are of candle was it? And my favorite part of the whole thing is that she said, well, you know, one thing led to another. But what? What led to one, what, what led to another? That's what I need to know. Did you kick I'm it? I'm assuming they're vanilla candles. I'm assuming, unless they're a Bed Bath & Beyond haul. Were they on of the your floor? You know, we've seen the home gym in great detail before on the Instagram. We know that she has those dangling Christmas lights. We know she has a Sailor Moon saber. Um, the tiny couch? Did the tiny couch make it? That's tiny, all I need to know. Was the tiny couch the culprit? Did she accidentally set the tiny couch aflame? I don't know if the tiny couch made it. I didn't I, I didn't see it. I think it did not survive. But we do know that she has one also in her living room. Um, but burning up promo, she, to her credit, she is nothing if not consistent. This is something that has happened, I believe, t- at least twice that we know of. She hasn't burned down whole homes to this point yet, but we know that in 2002, Lynn wrote on the then like Lynn's Corner website that Brittany accidentally almost burned down, I believe, Brother Brian's apartment in New York because of candles. Then there was something, I believe, later on. The point being, she has a candle problem. Same. Same. You do too. She enjoys burning up promo. She performed it on tour. It was a sign. Uh, Spark. And it's like gasoline. What? Gasoline. She's been sending us the signs for a while now. She really has. She's on fire. Literally, the opening uh, of the Dream Within a Dream tour kicked over a candle <laughs> and just flames. Oops, I did it again, if, promo. If you're surprised, you're not paying attention, basically, <laughs> because she told us all along this is going to happen. Yeah, circus tour kicked over a candle, tour, slave for you oh ring. God. Exactly. It's always been a flame. So to no surprise, her NFL kickoff performance with the Flames, the slave performance. Oh, so good. So good. Move, girl. My home gym's on fire. (laughs) My home gym's on fire. Move, girl. Like that ass on fire. (sighs) (sighs) You bitches know it, right? My home gym's on fire. uh, (laughs) (laughs) That dance break is so good. It really is. Uh, What else does she light on fire? She has those fire pants. Yep. Circus ring. Yeah. I mean, the fire and Brittany have been connected for a very long time. So it's good to know that she is consistent. Fire, tigers, and candles. Oh, my. Oh, the, the title of the mysterious book one day. <laughs> well, obviously, this set the internet ablaze as well. And it became a TikTok meme. It became a headline everywhere. I had a lot of people personally checking in with me to confirm this story. I know that my own parents were asked me to confirm if this is a true story because they saw the headline. Said, That's yes. when you know that Britney has transcended to uh-huh. like superstardom oh, yeah. because people that pay no attention to any of this shit start sending me messages on Facebook Messenger. Uh huh. Exactly. That's when I'm like, oh, wow, she is the moment. She's got the girls on Facebook talking about her. Who even uses That's Facebook? No. Exactly. It's a good barometer for her impact. And she certainly um, charted this week with home gym on fire. (laughs) (laughs) And anyway, here's my workout. So anyway, here's my workout. Goes right back to hyper speed, Nicki Minaj, Roman Holiday. (laughs) It was like, know what it reminded me of? What? Her hyper speed videos always remind me of hitting the fast forward button in The Sims. Yes. I mean, everyone was like, I saw somebody say, oh my God, she's like a Sim now because she basically (laughs) set the house on fire like a Sim. It's literally that. Because that's what Sims do. They just like work out at like 8,000 speed and then they accidentally light things on fire (laughs) and burn their whole house down. Like it's very Sims one tease. It it is. It absolutely is. And, you know, to find out that we are all living in a simulation by observing Britney would really just really check out with our whole how the world is. Wow. But anyway, a I... A moment of joy. Yeah, I would say this, um, how this turned out for her, um, I would say it was um, 
comical in the sense of like, oh, Brittany. It was just so random. Yes. Like, how did that news not break when a fire started at her house? Like, I want to know six months ago what she was posting that wasn't, oh, my gym's on fire. Like, did she post a picture of a flower as her gym was on flame in flames? Yeah, probably. I have to imagine so. As with everything in the world of Spears, there are only more questions than answers. And I don't know if we'll ever know the full truth, but at least we know now. We that think we know, but we have no idea. Because everything's been set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Also, we got news from her that she's been quarantined away from Sam. She has, and she's losing weight as a result out of out of her heart being missing him so much. Yes, and they've started posting throwback photos of them on, I assume, throwback unless they reunited for that bike ride. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was like, oh, we finally reunited or that was a throwback. But either way, she's missing her sweetie um, in quarantine Oh, and she also revealed that she had just come back from Louisiana, which she didn't make that public until now. Right. Well, wasn't that rumored think, because Jamie Lynn posted I think she appeared something? In, video or in a photo or something. Yes. Or there was like a, did they draw something in chalk? And then it said like, Brittany did this one. I did this one. What was it? Yep. Yeah. It was yeah. something like that. Like, Auntie did this or whatever. Um, you know. An artist. With, an artist. Yes. As with everything with her, we don't find out these things after the fact. For weeks. So as turns out, she took a little vacation to Louisiana and she's been on a spree with her latest look, the shoulder bearing uh floral I, I top. Know, kind of peasanty. <laughs> well, you know, I artsy fartsy, peasanty. Love that look. Jeans, beautiful skirts. She can wear. Very peasant. Love these florals. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so she found her favorite new outfit that she is showing off, which is her thing. We love to see it. And that's pretty much where we're at with her most recent doings, which is pretty good. I mean, setting a gym on fire and losing weight from your boyfriend, that's a lot in a week. Yeah, she loves those floral tops. And you know what? I love that for her. So It's a win-win for everyone. And speaking of fashions, uh, you know what I think it's time for? Oh, what? Oh, I think it's time for High Fashion Editorial. High Fashion! <laughs> oh, so editorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my God, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. And what so, a time for fashion. Is, is it? <laughs> what do you, what sparked your creative eye this week in the world of fashion? Well, I got some new masks from my friend Lindsay. Yes, that are very you've been cute. Those. Yes, Atlanta I like Bunny, them. not sponsored, just promoing a friend. I love the, the I love that look. Mm-hmm. I got to name the designs. So basically, I'm Anna Wintour. Oh, oh my god, mm-hmm. are they just like Heidi Paris Lindsay? No, it's uh, Prismarine <gasps> is one of them. Oh my God. Um, Katie is shaking. Teal Kyle, uh, Mist, and Deep Ocean. Oh mm-hmm. my God. Yeah. She's a designer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that FIT degree really did come in handy. Oh, right. The Fashion <laughs> Institute of Technology knows nothing about fashion. <laughs> I went for graphic design, all right? But you don't have to say it. You could just be like, uh, that checks out as an FIT graduate. I have the right to name these masks. That is true. Yeah. Well, there's been, you know, no one's really stepped out uh, except to get groceries, but people have been doing photo shoots at home. Yes. You know, she's refusing to make music, but (laughs) she's making plenty of fashions. That she is. Queen Rena, Miss Rihanna Fenty. Yes, her latest Savage X Fenty Spring Summer 2020 looks. I mean, she looks incredible. Well, always. Always. Yeah, she posted like a series of pics um, somewhere much richer and happier than wherever we are, looking very happy and good. And the fashion was good. (laughs) It was. Yeah, she really did that as usual. Now, has it always Um, been called Savage? Yeah, so she has her high fashion line called Fenty and then Savage X Fenty is like the panties and bras and all the lingerie. Got it. 
So it's two different things. Yeah, Savage is is lingerie, and then Fenty is that Louis Vuitton collab, not collaboration, but it's the same LVMH house, interesting like, developed Fenty, and it's a luxury brand. I'm a savage. Not giving you the <laughs> album, <laughs> acting <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. I can't. Yes, and uh, as far as uh, fashion elsewhere in the world, um, I have to give it up to two members of K-pop group Blackpink. Um, once again, Lisa, who I talked about last week for doing a dance video. Well, that dance video has since gone into meme overdrive. Um, all of a sudden, James Corden, Diplo, all of these people were using a screenshot of Lisa's legs and doing the um, challenge, I guess we'll call it. Oh, of, that's what that was? Yes. Did this post or did, does, is this right? Like, did this work? Did this work? That's that's. Oh. So Lisa's legs are all over the world right now. Pretty pretty legendary, if you ask me. Pretty leg and dairy. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you ask me. If you me, ask me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, so Lisa's um, dance video reign continues. Meanwhile, her uh, group member, co-member Jenny, became a worldwide trending topic uh, over the weekend for posting 60 selfies in her bedroom, I believe it was, in a 15-minute span, which essentially is very brave and is the amount of pictures I take for one post that she just decided, let's just post them all. I have to applaud that. And then she became a trending topic. Her Instagram feed is literally just a whole bunch of selfies. Because that's all anyone can do. That's all anyone can do. So that's pretty much where we're at. Until we import fancy photographers. And all we're going to do is get TBT Coachella pics for the next two years. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not one to talk because every night I look at that time hop and that on this day on Instagram and Facebook and I'm just like, oh, look at that. I lived a life. (laughs) I had moments. Is it just me or does Instagram, has Instagram been sending more of those, like popping them up? Oh, for sure they have. I'm like, since when did you, yeah, (laughs) I'm like, stop reminding (laughs) me of this. What is this feature? Where did you come from? Uh, Yeah, it's, they're just like, hey, remember when you got to see people? Yeah, remember remember when you had friends? Remember when you went (laughs) to this concert? (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I do. Thank you. Amazing. Please don't remind me. Exactly. I'm like, can I turn this off? <laughs> no, I I feel that. Well, uh, I don't want to see that. I don't... <laughs> yeah. So high fashion um, TBT. That's basically what we're going to have for the next year. Well, shit. But anyway, instead of, you know, we don't like to dwell on the past here besides... <sighs> Besides a 20 year retrospective podcast, you know, we like to look to the future. If there is one, <laughs> we, have... we like to look to the future nostalgia. Oh, right. And we have a lot of songs to, we can talk about that just came out. Yeah. There's another wave of new music, which uh, there is. was pretty strong this week, I feel like. It's a lot of variety. Yes. Oh. Mm hmm. Well, first up, Queen B, the other Queen B, jumped on the Savage remix with Megan Thee Stallion, Beyonce. Yes. Now, I have to say, this is, we all know how a remix ha- goes down these days. It's a cut and paste feature at the tail end of the song, and then they just market it as a whole new thing, and it's just very minimal effort. They just cut that verse on their iPhone, sent it in, whatever. That happens a lot. This is like a remix. You've yeah. got ad libs, melodies, harmonies, new verses, all that stuff. She's singing about this only things for legends. <laughs> when we ask for a remix, this is a remix. This this goes back to the days of Mariah Carey doing fucking ten minute house diva remixes of her songs to chart in the clubs. This is how you do it. You you sing the song again differently. Right. You give us something new. Yeah. A so I thought was, mix. Oh oh, is that the concept of a remix is basically, you know, remixing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was a, a total job well done and also sparked new life in a song that is, it's definitely at its peak right now, but I think it's going to enjoy a lot more life to it, obviously, because of this remix. And 
I'm just really happy for Megan. I feel like what a year to have, Queen. you know, Beyonce jumping on your song. It seems like I didn't go deep with her as far as like, I wasn't one of an, an early ad- adopter. I didn't really know her whole story until <clears throat> more recently, but she seems like a total sweetheart. You had a great experience with her. And I just think this is so such a win all around for everyone. Oh, and the other fact is that of course, all the, the profit from this song goes to charity. Mm -hmm. which is just uh, a cherry on top. I mean, she's been anointed by a legend at this point. This doesn't just happen. Because we all know Beyonce is Beyonce. Exactly. And she's very elusive. So to have her pop up on this remix, I was like, okay, Beyonce doesn't do that anymore. Nope, that's an endorsement. Yeah. Totally. Also, Beyonce knows what OnlyFans is. Yeah, that's the other thing. OnlyFans was mentioned in the song. I think OnlyFans responded to Beyonce on Twitter, I want to say. Oh, sit down, OnlyFans. I know, but... It's Beyonce. Congratulations. But that was cool, and it wasn't in a degrading way, I don't think. It was just... It was a fun mention, and then um, kept a queen, Collegend, roll in, danced to it. She did. Actually, a lot of people are dancing to it. It is rising up the TikTok charts. And the charity has announced that there was a significant bump in donations from it. They did what they had to do. I want a look into Beyonce's world, just like a little bit. Like who, uh, this is the whole thing. I need Yanla going, is that what you want? Well, you're never going to get it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, no, no, hear me out for a second though. So it has been long rumored that Beyonce has an alt on Twitter. Now, if you guys don't know what an alt is, so do you oh, have the one? Vault. I think the vault, like, because she has a very detailed vault of all of her things. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. She, yeah, no, I yeah, yeah. an alt, A L T. Oh, oh, oh. So there's this thing called an alt, which means that you have an alt account that you like act a fool on, and you can like, you know, be anonymous, whatever. It's like a Twitter thing. So if you ever see people talking about like, oh, on my alt or like whatever, that's what that means. Do you have one? Or either like posting offensive things or showing whole or whatever they do on their alt. Yeah. I don't do that on my alt. I don't have an alt. Really? I just post all my embarrassing things, right, for everyone to see. Uh, <laughs> <true>. <laughs> I think why? Why? Just cut out the middle, man. <laughs> right? Oh, my alt. I've had my alt since like, let me look. Oh my God. I didn't oh, wait, realize. I can't look because you're on the phone. Um, I've had an alt since like 2013. Oh my God. And it's private. So no one knows it, but I use it to like test stuff out or like if I'm going to do a meme, I like post it on my alt first, see what it looks like. See if I like it. Or just like bully Camila Cabello. (laughs) No, I don't follow anyone. I just follow, um, I think I just follow Mariah and Brittany. Oh, I will say, I think I've developed, uh, had to create an alt to test out things for work through the years of like create a fake sweater just to make sure the tweet goes correctly. That's true. But I don't even remember like those accounts, but they were never used for anything other than like testing out videos and things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point was that it's been long rumored that Beyonce lurks the internet on alts. Mm. Now there's no evidence to support that claim. It's just been like a stan Twitter thing because everyone's like, how does Beyonce she's know? How does she know? Like OnlyFans case? Do you think that's... Who explained to her what OnlyFans is? That's what I want to know. It's possible. I'm like, whose hole did Beyonce have to be subjected to <laughs> in order for her to talk about it? That's and a really good point. it has also been long rumored, which I'm pretty sure this is confirmed, that Beyonce also loves the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh yeah, she does. And so I'm like... Is Beyonce at home this week watching the Zoom reunion of Housewives of Atlanta on her alt account, seeing gays with their holes out? Like, is that Beyonce's reality? I feel like it is. I absolutely think it is. I think she has it all. And it's just like Dua Lipa's boob. That's the at. And she just stands future nostalgia and she follows only fans gays and she tweets Housewives memes at us. Right. And she fights people over charts and sales and it's like that gif of her playing um nintendo ds do you know that gif of beyonce on the nintendo yes oh my god that's literally her on that's Twitter literally right beyonce on her alt 
watching the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion on Zoom. For sure. I think we confirmed Housewives of Atlanta because she referenced um, Gone with the Wind Fabulous yes. many years ago. And Solange talked about it, I think. Yes. Oh, see, this is just like, it goes back to the whole Britney thing we've talked about. It's like, we don't want, you know, we don't want to barge down the doors and like know all your shit and be all up in your business. Right. But there's like little things, you know. Like, like I just like, want to know what apps are on your phone. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> like what was your guilty pleasure? Like what's the trashiest reality TV show you like? Right. Like there's a lot. There's just a lot of of like very specific questions I have about Beyonce's interaction with humans. Right? I feel she must observe social media from some sort of way, but who knows? It's healthy or not to. <laughs> that is honestly true. But it's good that she's um staying in check always with like what's popping in culture still. So I don't know. I think she nailed it with this. She nailed it with the song selection, the lyrics. She raps perfectly on this. And I love the little, okay, in each chorus. That mm-hmm. that kind of just makes it. The detail. I did see a tweet that was like, I can't believe we have this song with no summer. And I was like, oh, don't do this to oh, me. Well, Which goes back okay. to my point. I want depressing music. Well. But anyway. <laughs> Speaking of remixes... Oh, yes. There's there another one. Say so. Doja, who you also had on the show, and Miss Nicki Minaj. So Say So had, I would say, is more on the decline as far as like its TikTok peak was probably more like Jan, February. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not a bad time to do it, but I do think it is more like on the way out versus, or maybe I don't know, maybe the general public is just getting into it. I'm not really sure, but well, I'm we thought sure. Bedtime Stories was out in 1994 and then it <laughs> fucking charted this week. So at this point, who knows? That's true. The Say So featuring Nikki remix will chart in 2063 at number one again. But um, <laughs> I, I love the remixes of... um. No, sorry. I'm sorry to Nikki. We stand and support. But like the say so remixes of people adding in reality show quotes, like the Gemma Collins one. Oh, yes. And also the Roxy Andrews one. Did you hear that? I don't think I heard that one. Okay. So I think all of those memes have sort of ruined any like actual remix of the song for me because mm-hmm. all I hear in my brain is the Gemma Collins remix. Should I insert it in here? You should, definitely. Pretty much, I will let Gemma know that she is a fat and um, the shoes that she gave me were not something that I would particularly buy for myself. They were old, maiden type of shoes. And she said that those shoes were meant to be worn on a beautiful woman. So if that's the case, she should have put them back on the rack and she should never even purchase them because she was unqualified to own those shoes if that's the case. And um, I think Gemma is just a disgrace. She's a disgrace to humanity and she's a disgrace to women who are actually beautiful and classy and um, she just doesn't have the vernacular that she thinks she possesses. Somebody lied to her several times and told her that she was fly, hot, and sexy and beautiful and she's nothing like that. She's nothing of the sort. You know, Nikki made some waves for, I don't know if you know about the lyric scandal. She says, tell Mike Jordan, send me my retros. Used to be by now I'm just hetero. <laughs> Some people are not taking kindly to that. You know, it's a choice for a lyric in this sort of climate, but I also think it's Nicki Minaj and she's playful with words and I don't know necessarily that we need to put that much weight into what she says when she's making a rhyme that's fun. But it didn't go over super well. There's definitely some backlash to that. I don't know. I It's a, it's a, a slippery slope. Obviously, it's somewhat controversial because of Doja Cat's early origins with Dr. Luke. But um, anyway, nothing nothing is easy here. No. Everything is awful, and we're just making the best of it. That's honestly true. And I just, I'm happy that Nikki, Doja, Megan, and Beyonce are having this little moment right now. And I I love that the girls are coming back. Yeah. 
happy about that. So those were two rem- remixes that were probably the most talked about of the week. Um, there was another collaboration, which we should talk about. <clears throat> Marshmallow, uh, the EDM superstar, has teamed up with Halsey on a song that I actually really like. It's called... Oh, it's so good. Be Kind, and it's about being kind. Um I think she also said that it's kind of like a song that she wanted out there right now. It's a positive message. It's light and fun. And I kind of stand Halsey. Yeah, I mean, especially collabs. I feel she did kind of, I would say that the general public really latched on, obviously, with Closer, with the Chainsmokers. Inescapable, that song. Me. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like a really big Halsey fan. Oh, that was yeah. so. I already told that story, right? Yes, you did. Oh my god, um, I'll never ever forget that moment. It was so fucking funny. Um, I really think that she actually has a knack for EDM features and should keep doing it. Say, I'm well, you don't have to tell me that. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna be like, um, go electronic, Halsey, but like, actually, yeah, and she's from Jersey, so like, I kind of, it's in her blood. right. <laughs> And the video of her when she flipped out on the fan for saying G-Eazy. Oh, yeah. It's that was like she's so Jersey. Jumping out. Oh, I have to stand. Right. <clears throat> I want to be in a girl group with her and BB Rexa. Jersey girls. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I actually can really see that. Mm-hmm. Quarantina, Halsey, and BB. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> um, the song was number one I... for 50 fucking weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pro Be Kind and also into the song and Halsey's EDM-ness. <laughs> to quote A Star is Born featuring Halsey, how great. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of EDM, I watched the Martin Garrix like on my rooftop stream or whatever. Oh. And it was so good. I was like, can everyone do things like this? Yeah, David Guetta did that, that in Miami. Yeah, it was like the audio was so clear. It looked good. It was like pretty to watch. I was just jamming out. Well, there you go. But it's just DJs that can work from home. No one else. That is true. What else came out this week? Oh, there's one that I don't even know that you know about because it just came out like in the middle of the night. Um, and that is Probably Sia. Not. Oh, no. Yeah, Sia dropped a ballad. It called Are Save people My Life. Like, it, did they scrap the whole like Thursday night thing? I feel like songs are just coming out a every little day. Bit. Okay. I do. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, isn't it all over the place it's, now? It's definitely more over the place. I kind of think people don't really care about charting anymore because it's also, I don't know. I, I don't. I care about I, charting and it's about time for everyone to buy glory already. Well, that's a whole other topic. So Sia dropped a song called Saved My Life. It has her face on it when she was 17 on the cover, which is a rarity. She doesn't do that anymore. And then the most interestingly of all, the song was co-written with Miss Dula Peep. This is a place for legends. Okay. It is a beautiful ballad. And obviously this is um, for charity. So we love to see it. We love to see it. it. Um, yeah, so check that out. It drops at 1 a.m. on Saturday. Saturday. That's so random. Yes. She performed it earlier in the week during a live stream benefit, and now it is here. So it's it's an uplifting ballad. It's good. It's very good. So get into that. It's benefiting Ameri- AmeriCares and Corresponds. So we love to see it. Anyway, keeping it moving, we also have new music from a queen who it's been a long time coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and her name is Miss Jojo. And not Jojo That's Siwa. Great. Not Jojo Siwa, who's having her own interesting moment on TikTok, actually. That's a whole other story. Yeah, that's a whole other journey. <laughs> She's having her Hannah Montana transformation moment, I feel like. She is. I'm kind of living for it. I'm kind of ready for Jojo Siwa's Can't Be Tamed era. She's going to rip off the bow and be like, stop the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your <laughs> robot. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to put a pin in Miss Jojo Siwa because the original Miss Jojo has come through with her studio album called Good to Know. So this album dropped on uh, Friday and 
Miss Jojo is a singer. We rarely listen to people who do not sing. Enter that Whitney clip. She uh, can sing. She can sing, and she sings up and down this album. I think that is like the takeaway is it's such a vocally skillful album. It's very, very sexy. It's very... Um, very moody. Very moody, sexual in nature, and also, you know, just going through it. It's also very cohesive, um, I feel like. Yes, I would say so for sure. I'm really enjoying it, still digging into it. I love the opening series of So Bad, Pedialyte, Gold, and Some Man. Um, <clears throat> but I'm into everything about the album. I think this is um, superior to her last album. And, you know, I just want to see her win, basically. I would love for her to just really have that triumphant moment. I mean, she is, but, you know, to have like a really big general public moment because I feel like she gets written off as you know, leave Get Out and Too Little Too Late and being 13. And then there was obviously a giant gap in time. But she also has a great, um, there's like a little documentary about the the true, more or less, you know, like the, the depths of what she went through when she signed to Black Grand Records, them not letting her release music and that whole drama and her finally getting out of it. She goes through all of it in this really good like half hour special that's on YouTube if you want to check that out. She talks about getting into this album. It's really huh. good because her whole story is about how Blackground Records effectively, you know, prevented her from releasing music for years, and she eventually had to wiggle her way out of contractually, legally, all of this stuff. And uh, she was so so frustrated, obviously, and she's allowed to do it again and on her own terms. That's why when Taylor Swift. Um, was having her legal battle and like basically threatening to re-record her entire discography. JoJo's name came into the spotlight again because JoJo did that because she was not able to get her original music onto streaming. So she re-recorded it herself, which is such a boss move. But anyway, we stand JoJo in this house and, you know, I'm still digging into the album, but I highly recommend it. I love the and album cover. Yes, I love the album cover too. I will say the album for me, I was like not really connecting with it. Mm -hmm. I like it, but it was also, I don't know. Like I just, I feel like I'm having a disconnect with music lately. Well, I would strongly agree with that. I am having a very hard time feeling entirely passionate about anything. Right? Musically. Like I'm like, oh, she sounds so good. And I'm like, yes, she has an album out, but I'm listening to it. I'm like, I couldn't like vibe with it. Well... I definitely think it's kind of just getting yourself to a place where you can get lost in the music, but yeah, that's true. um, I agree. It's hard. I'm having a difficult time. I've said it already to get too excited about new music. It's just really hard for me. I'm, I'm retreating into things I already know. And like, I'm still getting as many pitch emails and stuff. And it's just really hard for me to listen through everything because I, not really giving it my all. I don't really, it's hard to get excited about new stuff right now for me. I also, I mean, I sort of always knew this before because we'd always talked about how we would listen to music on our walks and it was like such a thing. Yeah. How connected music is to experiences for me, I think is now being highlighted. Mm, Like I look back and I'm like listening to old albums and I can like hear, see, smell envision memories like everything is flooding back and so all this new music my memories of it like with Dua Lipa I'm like cool it's so good I loved it but my memories of it are being in my apartment alone Uh, (laughs) like listening to this new Jojo album I was like cool like does that make (laughs) sense like no I agree with you I feel like it's hard to um escape into new music uh right now and in some ways for some people, for other people, it's not. Uh, it's everybody's got a different relationship with the stuff. But I definitely am having a hard time getting that passionate or that excited about anything new in general right now. I just kind of binging things that are familiar, and I don't really think I'm alone in that. I feel like a lot of people are sort of retreating into things that they know and like already. Yeah. But regardless, given JoJo her props, it's a great record, and I think hopefully she can have justice for it. When she does tour, which she was planning to tour and had to move that, obviously, like everyone else. So, because the JoJo live experience is really phenomenal. Like the voice just, it jumps out. So, she at least, is a good 
which I don't know when this will ever happen, but right. I feel like she could have a really good medley moment on a award show. Totally. Kind of like what Kesha did recently where she brought back TikTok. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. Right? Like if she just busted out into like leave get out. Yeah. Did did a whole little progression of I was like I'm still here. Like, mhm. Mhm. Well, to her credit at least, she is this getting time. attention. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I love that bop. <laughs> She's getting attention in high places, critical praise, and her idol, Mariah, tweeted about it. She sure did. So I think... Two vocalists supporting each other. And she had a wonderful experience. She got to sing with Mariah backstage at one point recently doing harmonies. So I think she's really doing it. I feel terrible that once again, something there's been like a, something to stall her. I know. So many of our queens got stalled this year. Yeah. Carmeet, JoJo, Mandy. Most importantly, Carmeet. (laughs) Most importantly, Um, Carmeet, yes. Yes, it's true. I feel, yeah, I actually do feel terrible for the Pussycat Dolls because that momentum of doing the O2 and doing a whole tour was Mm -hmm. like squashed, but it's the same for everyone. Demi's new era, Chromatica. Oh, Chromatica. Well, you know... We shouldn't harp on any of that, but... Right. Our Stephanie Jeremato. What did she Instagram this week? You're right. She actually um, set the little monsters crazy because she posted what looks like a little slogan, but it might also be um, lyrics. She just posted a thing that says, you're my favorite. And then there's a, a giant tear underneath the words. And so... My Stephanie like, Jeremato. <laughs> People replied and they were like, you're my favorite hole? What? (laughs) There's a a giant hole underneath the words. I'm sure she was just having it look artistic. I Maybe. Who knows? I saw everyone tweeting be like, oh my God, she's coming. Chromatica's launching at midnight. I was like, what? Oh, right. Everyone's (laughs) like, rain on me, midnight. Like, no. (laughs) No, not yet. That's been 24-7 Chromatica watch. But one series, one program that everyone's been clamoring about has luckily been taped right before quarantine and is still rolling Thankfully. out. <laughs> that, of what course. What will we do without this show? Oh, and also, I know you aren't watching, so I will give it the briefest highlight. Drag Race really did that this week. They had a makeover of super fans, all women. That was really incredible. And then they had Celebrity Drag Race. The first episode was god-awful. This episode, it's like a different show. It's so weird how they premiered with such a bad episode. But I think it just goes to show that men should not be trusted or given rights because they... (laughs) (laughs) It was the first episode was guys and this was um, women and like beloved women. So it was so much better and everyone was so much more happy, I felt. It was less like ha-ha jokes about wearing boob plates and stuff. It was much more involved. They did a Dolly part in Rusical. They did performances. It was so funny and good. So, Oh, and Alyssa was one of the mentors, and Asia O'Hara, and Trinity the Tuck. And they all... The concept is basically they look after a celebrity, turn them into the ultimate drag queen, and then whoever wins all their $30,000 goes to charity. So it's basically drag you, but with celebs? Yes, Got it. I'm looking forward to seeing who else they have on the show. Yeah, sorry. I haven't been watching. It's fine. And isn't it but like we'll... three and a half hours now every single week? <laughs> yeah, it is because you got Drag Race, Celebrity Drag Race, Untucked. Then again, what else do we have to watch? True. Well, we I know do what we have to watch. watch. <laughs> My favorite new show, Instant Influencer on YouTube with James Charles. Only one can become an instant influencer. Yes. Obviously, we were perched for episode one. It did not disappoint. Episode two just kept the drama coming. For those of you who aren't watching, I'm sorry. (laughs) Because we have to discuss this. I will say, and this is bleak sounding, but it's true. Uh Watching this episode on Friday was the first time that I laughed all week. Oh, that is pretty dark. It is. But it's true. 
well, I'm glad that you got that from the episode. You know, in the tie-in with Drag Race, it featured Trixie Mattel Mm -hmm. as one of the guest judges, along with a seemingly happier Norvina. Yeah, right? She she pepped up this week. Yeah. (laughs) And they fixed the wig. They did fix the wig. The challenge this week was to, obviously because Trixie was there, to get into drag. So all of the contestants had three hours to do drag makeovers, and they all really took different sort of interpretations of drag. Yeah, And it also was... was low-key funny that James Charles did a drag makeover challenge with men and women before RuPaul, basically, as contestants. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite uh, part of this show, though, is just how extra everything is. Oh, you mean when he walked out in a bathrobe to wake up everybody? Good morning. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, it's so early in the morning. It's five in the morning. But he is in a full beat <laughs> in a bathrobe. Yes. Slamming on the elevator button, like, unnecessarily. It's I think just my favorite, so extra. It's so extra. My favorite thing about it, and it's my same love with all low budget, not relatively low budget reality shows is that there's such an intensity to it and it's so silly because you know that like it's not American Idol but everyone is really passionate and crazed and worried and crying and it's like it's sort of how I feel about first season second season Dragula where it's like it's such a low budget show in comparison to competitors that it's fascinating to watch them compete in a very basic setup right and literally cry over their eyebrows yeah i just would have changed my eyebrow i think i would have changed my eyebrows yeah i'm so sorry i really don't want to cry right now it's okay um i really had higher expectations of myself so i'm not angry at the critiques because i agree with them 100 percent, and that's why i'm upset i i feel that benny's watery eyes obviously were a uh, a pain point this episode. Um, but, you know, he, he turned it out. He mixed it he up really and made did. those neon tears. Neon tears. I've been peeking at their Instagrams after each episode, and they are, like, exponentially growing. Yeah, a lot. They're all going to have, like, little YouTube careers for sure. Queen Ashley. Queen Ashley came through. I feel also, like she's my favorite. She said the amount of time she said the house this episode. Oh my the whole like the whole thing is just the house the sis. House. When Benny came out and was like, it's Brittany Betch, just randomly <laughs> out of nowhere. Like no reference to Brittany at all whatsoever, and just comes nope. walking into the workroom and it's just like it's Brittany Betch. The impact. I'm like, what? <laughs> I just really am thoroughly entertained by all of it once again. And, you know, the competition's really heating up, it unfortunately. Is, we won't spoil it, but who went home this week? I was like, oh, yeah, the drama. Same. The drama. And once again, <laughs> had to do a teary sign-off at the very end, which is the most, one of the more cruel elimination processes I've ever seen on a reality show. <laughs> You're emotionally devastated. Now film an outro with me, James Charles. It's so funny, but it's so fitting to the times. Oh, completely. And the critiques too kill me. They're so fast. Yes, they really are. And you cannot understand a word that James says. No, no. And I laugh the entire time. I really like what you did with your eyes, but I think you could do something a little different with your highlighter so that in person it's less blinding, but on camera it looks great. (laughs) glue down your eyeshadow and then it'll make your eyes a little bit bigger and then you can go even bigger than that and then you can go even bigger and then Benny was just like yeah yeah (laughs) it's like okay Uh, whatever it was a moment of joy it really was we we love a a silly reality competition now there was another reality reference to Britney this week that did not go well yes speaking of the drag queens and James Charles Miss Gigi Good (laughs) Miss G- James Charles levitating performer Gigi Good. <laughs> yeah. Posted the birthday twin photo. Yes. Which, if you didn't know, okay. there was a birthday twin meme on Twitter. Now, I thought the birthday twin meme was starting out as like, you take a picture and post a photo of this celebrity that you actually share a birthday with. Yes. So I was, I saw this and I was like, what, what did you do? What? Well, here's the thing. He was born on December 2nd. Oh. It literally was his birthday twin. Oh, plot twist. So, technically, the challenge was accurately... At the end of the day, I think 
it's most important to remember that any Twitter photo challenge is ultimately a way of posting a selfie of yourself. <laughs> and I think, so all the gays participate so that they can post a picture of themselves. Unfortunately, Gigi wanted to take it and do something funny. I don't know what the point was. So she went with her robot look, which obviously was a bald cap, and then inevitably used a Britney photo after shaving her head, which, as we've long established, is not cute to make fun of. It's It somehow became part of the cultural consciousness that it was somehow okay to mock that moment. Apparently, I, I do think the tides are turning, the conversation, especially around that moment, because she was met with pretty much universal negativity. And I was going to say, was it universal though? Because I feel like a lot of people were saying, oh, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. You're fine. Like, they're like I would, yes, yes sure. Queen Gigi. But, oh my God, don't listen to h- the haters. And I'm like, what? Like, why is this always so, like some people are allowed yeah. to get away with making the jokes and don't get dragged. And like, what? Right. I definitely think she was dragged from my perspective. I think there was a lot of take this down, don't do this, delete this. Gotcha. this. And ultimately she did, and she tweeted that she didn't mean to mock or make fun. And, you know, not to make the excuse of she's 21. She is 21, but otherwise I think a lot of 21-year-olds also really feel for Brittany, especially in that moment, and don't find that cute. Because I think culturally we were in such a place with like TMZ culture and as we've already talked about forever on the other podcasts of how we treated her and somehow it just became acceptable to make fun of that so it still slips through every now and then people still well, make like there's fun also of- a mixture of there's like some people who look at it as this was rebellious and badass and like her yeah yeah they do her f you to society the media and, and society yeah. and everyone who puts all this pressure on women to be you know, yes. to look beautiful. And she was like, fuck that. Like, I'm shaving my head. Now you can't use me as like a thing. So there's yeah. so many people who felt that way about it. And then there's so many True. people who think the total opposite of it. So it's just one of those nuanced conversations that, we, as we both know, you can't have <laughs> well. You can't have that conversation in a tweet. You can't no, have you that sure. conversation in two photos. So like... I definitely don't think it's something that is established enough, I'll say, no. society-wise, that we've decided that was empowering or we've decided it wasn't enough to make it a joke, I guess, at the end of the day. Right. Because ultimately, the joke was the bald part. Yeah. Which so, was like, okay, why? Yeah. Yeah. So it did not go over well. She, I believe, deleted and apologized. So in the future, everyone will be canceled for 15 minutes. That is... <laughs> art (laughs) (laughs) kind of just think it's that and i do think then you won't make the same mistake again you won't you'll realize that that was bad uh so that was a misfire from miss good enter james charles to wear her wig next week on the competition as she's been eliminated (laughs) honestly if you had Gigi good as a guest judge on instant influencer i wouldn't know the difference (laughs) season two I'm sure she she did not mean to be mean. It just was a misfire. So better luck next time. And yeah, it's fine. Twitter, yeah, rolls onward. Anyway, anything else from this week? No, that about wraps it up. It's been a lot. Yeah. I guess there's really nothing else to do but light a candle. <laughs> Kick it over. <laughs> Set your room on fire and just sit there and say, this is fine. It's like that meme. And then say, one thing led to another. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, though, 2020 in a nutshell, it's literally Britney sitting in her home gym while it's on fire saying, this is fine. Yeah, it honestly is. Anyway, uh, we hope everybody's doing well out there. Remember when you're lighting your candles at home to watch them and blow them out at night. or yes, whenever keep them you're away from out. a curtain. Or a little tiny couch. Trim your wicks. That is the most important thing. It is. But like actually, you're supposed to trim the wicks down. Yep. So do that. Helps with the soot and also keeps the flames lower. You better trim, bitch. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You want a hot candle? Oh my God. (laughs) Well, oh, someone's been listening to Britney Jean on vinyl. (laughs) I wonder if the vinyl has the alien skip. 
Oh, have you? I haven't listened yet. To no, I, I think it does. Oh. I think somebody tweeted that it does. What I do would... you even play a vinyl on? <laughs> a vinyl player, a record player. Oh, you can still get oh, them. There's oh my God, like duh, that's right. to them. Yeah. Oh my! I literally, I just completely had a brain fart where I was like, "What CD player takes a vinyl?" <laughs> <laughs> cut to you like inserting it into your mac somehow <laughs> right and like lights on fire <laughs> <sighs> all right well stay safe stay sane everybody at home do your best anyway right it's all we can do that's right hang in there and until next week until next week we will see, see you, you soon. soon wow that was in sync that was good wow